It all started November 30th, 1979, as fans entered the Kansas Coliseum to see the Wichita Wings take on the New York Arrows. The first player ever signed by the Wings was Norman Piper. And fittingly, it was Piper who would score the team's first goal. Like Norman Piper, would become the only wing to have his uniform number retired. He was a star on the field in the wing's first season. And when play was out, everyone was watching the Angels. Including the TV cameras. George Lay was an integral part of the wing's first team as well, assisting coach Roy Turner on the bench and scoring goals on the field. The Wings' first season came down to a one-game playoff with Detroit. And in the early going, it was players like Andy Chapman and Omar Gomez, who scored early and kept the Wings even. But Detroit went ahead in the fourth quarter, forcing the Wings to come back or be eliminated from the playoffs. The Wings would tie the game on a sixth attacker goal. And in a wild scramble in front of the net, would win and advance. The 1980-81 Wings team showed that despite having only half the budget of the other cities in the league, the Wings could build a powerhouse with players like Norman Piper. Jurgen Christensen and Kim Runtved taking the shot. And Andy Chapman, who wowed him with his famous bicycle kick. The 80-81 playoffs in the first round brought Chicago and a 2-1 win in the series for the Wings. Setting up March 27, 1981, a date for Wings fans which will live in infamy. The famous shootout game in St. Louis. The Wings owned it early. Brian Tinian had one of the goals that gave Wichita a six to one cushion heading into the fourth quarter. Kevin Culey was outstanding as always for Wichita. Jurgen Christensen was assisting and scoring, but the game turned in a collision between Don Ebert of St. Louis and Mike Dowler, the Wings goalkeeper. Dowler was forced to leave the game, and with a minute left in regulation, Ebert would tie for St. Louis. It would set up the first shootout game in MSL playoff history. This tripping call on backup goalkeeper Brad Higgs gave St. Louis the momentum and the win. It was one of several calls that put Wings coach Roy Turner on the brink of tears. 
never seen a fish yet like it in my life. I just have never seen anything like it. We're not a physical team. Uh, maybe I should hire some boxers or something because the, I think that so many things were let go tonight. It was just diabolical. We couldn't believe it. We were all just saying, well, we may as well just said before the game, New York and St. Louis go and play. Is yeah. there no way they want Little Wichita in the final? Yeah. Simple as that. Uh, I think they know, and these lads know, it's the Wichita Wings who should be in the final. But Wings general manager Bill Kentling had no time to be bitter. There were dollars to be raised and a franchise to be saved. We have a long way to go to get to the 494,000 en route to the 605. But if we're at 494,000, yes, I would feel very, very optimistic about their decision to keep the team in Wichita. We have raised all but $115,000 of the money that we have yet to raise. And in a partnership meeting this morning, the partners agreed that the momentum by the Wichita business community, by the General Limited Partners, and by the Orange Army, thank you, is enough to assure us that we're going to go over the top and, and underwrite the season for next year. Managing general partner Frank Carney's team was on the brink of a great year. Utah Wings enter their fourth year of existence as one of the most successful soccer franchises in operation anywhere in the United States. The euphoria that has become the Wichita Wings emanated from humble origins in 1979 when the team in their initial season would go as far as the semifinals. The next year, the Wings won the Western Division Championship and into the semis they marched again. A one-game affair on a fateful night in March when the dreams of a season came crashing down around them in St. Louis. Still that night set the stage for the Wings' greatest season yet, a season that would see the Wings win 30 times and finally gain acceptance in a league where skeptics of Wichita's ability to endure reigned supreme. The phenomena of the Wichita Wings. What's it all about? It's about the fastest growing sport in America. It's about nearly half a million fans in three years. It's about the mass of humanity and the frenzied hysteria of the Orange Army. Again, it was on to the playoffs, and the team celebrated a first-round win over Memphis and St. Louis in the semifinals. Although the Wings would lose the playoff series with St. Louis, Game 2 was one of the classics in MSL playoff history. A 7-6 overtime win for the Orange. The Wings tied it with a sixth attacker goal and won it in overtime. Speaking of classic playoff games, in 82-83, the Wings would finally beat the Steamers in the postseason in one of the wildest games you'll ever, ever hope to see. Per Rundvitt's half-field goal against Slobo Ilyevsky will pale in comparison to a goal you'll see later from his brother. St. Louis' Steve Petcher was tossed from the game and didn't seem too happy about it. Every goal was delicious for Wings fans who were hungry for a win over St. Louis. This Kim Runfed header lives in league history.
the Wings had done it. Four years, four trips to the semifinals, and the sweet taste of beating their arch rivals. For the first time in the 83-84 season, the Wings would win individual honors as two players were named to the first team of the all-major indoor soccer league selections at season's end. Andy Chapman was picked up front. Chapman up front, supporting him in the back, the greatest defender in league history, Kim the Rocket Runtved. And here come the hometown wing. Pushing it up and ahead of the floor. Just like that, with the jobs on the board, Kim Runtved. Runtved has one goal and he's two. It looked like it deflected off an LA defender. If it's April, it must be another trip to the league semifinals, earned with two Wings wins on the road in Los Angeles. It's one to nothing, which... Kim Rockford has it on the right side. He goes to Jan Vanderveen in the corner. Centers it for Gomez. He tried to heel kick. Now, there with a blast, and it's in! That one just got right by Mahoney. So what a nice move there. Rockford has it along the board. Kim can kill a lot of time off all by his and he still has it. His shot, it's in! A shot! Eighty-four, eighty-five was the dawn of a new era. Storman Norman Piper, the original wing, was honored when his number seven was retired. Andy Chapman was sold to the Cleveland Force. But it was out with the old and in with the new as we met one of the most exciting players ever to grace an American soccer field, the Wizard, Denmark's Eric.
84-85 playoffs brought a new name to Wichita sports fans, the outrageous Minnesota goalie, Tino Latino. Other cities in the major indoor soccer league, the Wings assembled Jurgen Christensen, Kevin Culey, Kim Runtfed, Chico Borja, one of the most oppressive arrays of talent ever, and of course, Eric Rasmussen, the only player since 1982 to score seven goals in one game. Here they are against Chicago on February 21st, 1986. Skillful as Eric was, no one captured Wichita Hearts like a fiery playmaker born in Ecuador, moved to New Jersey. Both sides of the ball. The Wings would tie the game late on a dramatic Barry Wallace sixth attacker goal. And Kel Bordingard would win the game at the final buzzer. Or did he? The Wings thought so, but Pittsburgh's Don Popovich and players thought it came a little too late.
Wings general manager Bill Kentling and Popovich had words after the game. Riots might come one day and someone might, might get killed in this game, like it's happened in Europe most of the time in South America. And I just tried to explain the man. To come on the wing squared off in the 85 86 playoffs. And despite this Chico Borja magic, the series belonged to the Tacoma Stars. The Tacoma Stars would win in what their coach would call a highly entertaining series. And gave Borja a little bit too much breathing space to get us turned into the strike on ball. That's how that sixth foul can work against you on the defense. And I think Wichita need to be congratulated on playing the right kind of soccer that helps us sell the sport in Tacoma. And we're getting bigger crowds all the time. Alan Hinton's praise didn't ease the wounds of a talented Wichita team. Now, the only game we deserved to lose was the first one at home and we won it. But, uh, you know, the last two games here in Tacoma, we should definitely have won. But, you know, should have isn't. And we didn't. We'll leave you on a happy, wacky note from 85-86. Who can forget the time goalie Jan Olsen thought he was a forward? Jan Olsen, he may score. He did. I can't believe it. He did. Man, this place is going crazy. And you can see why they believe that this guy is an outstanding athlete. And they say he has great foot skills, as good as maybe anybody on the floor. And he just put on an exhibition. Ash and Bobby went about 175 feet down the left wing, beat Greg Villa, beat Carl Rose, and beat Slobo. And had something on the ball. He didn't dribble that thing in. Granted, Slobo was caught in a poor position, but he put that ball in there with... Wings general manager running. Bill Kentling was named the MSL commissioner after the season. Uh, it's a job that I wanted very much. I have been critical of my predecessors at the league level because I do not believe that the league has done enough to exploit the many qualities that it has. I don't think it would be possible maybe to do both jobs, although many people have suggested it and, uh, you know, even at an ownership level, it, I have been asked, would it be possible? I honestly think at this time it would not be. Would Roy Turner would move up to the team presidency. Charlie Cook was brought in as only the second coach in Wings history. And a newcomer named Mickey Thomas got the crowd excited early. And Chico Borja, he just got better and better. Oh yeah, there was still Eric Rasmussen as well. Not only feeding passes to Borja, but the Eric Rasmussen, who would continue to score some unbelievable goals all by himself. <laughs> Why not? Eric Rasmussen, this much for you. <laughs> I mean to tell you. Oh. The 86-87 playoffs were a repeat of the previous year, and Tacoma again won the first two games at home. Game three would be played in Wichita on Mother's Day, 1987. It was a 10-3 blowout for the Wings, but it wasn't the goals for which the game would be remembered.
It became known as the Mother's Day Massacre here when Neil Megson and Jerry Gray kicked Eric Rasmussen in the head. How can human beings start to kick a, a guy on the floor? It's a disgrace. I mean, if I was standing up, they can kick me the whole day, it's okay. But it's a disgrace for themselves and for soccer to, do, uh, to show a behavior like that. I don't the Wings won two games to send it back to Tacoma. But unfortunately for Wichita, the most prolific scorer in the history of the game, Steve Jungle, won the deciding game five for the Stars. 87-88 brought the departure of two great players from Wichita. The first to go was Kim Runfed, as he told KSNW News Channel 3. Blair and me, we had a magic number for me for to leave Wichita and, and Kansas City reached that and uh, obviously I'm very happy for it. And they have built uh, supposedly a team uh, around me and I mean that's what every athlete wants and uh, I'll be stupid if I can tell you that uh, that uh, I don't I don't like that, I like that. I'm, you know, I think he's, uh, he might be a little late for Wichita. And he was probably a little late with Kim Ronvet, and maybe it's a little late for Chico Borheim. With the Wings struggling on the field, the team turned to an old friend. Terry Nichol was coaching a minor league team in Memphis when he got the call to come home. for coming to uh, see us off the plane. That reminds me of the old times and uh, good to see so many happy, smiling faces. Thank you very much. Nickel would roll up his sleeves and go to work and it was easy to smile when your best friend is still on the team and happens to be Eric Rasmussen, the only wing ever to be named league MVP as he won the MISL scoring title. down to a West Coast trip at the end of the season, but Rasmussen was up to the challenge as Eric won the league scoring title and was named the league's most valuable player. Chico was back for the 88-89 season, the team's 10th anniversary campaign. Not only was it the return of Chico Borja, but also the return of Andy Chapman. And this year's playoff trip to Tacoma, it belonged to Wichita. Playoff win set up a classic semifinal against Baltimore. One that uh, we're out for, so could be contended with. And it's two to one. In game one, it looked as if the Wings were going to get all the breaks. But a bench penalty to Wichita for coming onto the field for a fight in the final moments of the game. Gave Baltimore a chance to score a sixth attacker goal to tie it. And in overtime, the blast won on a goal by David Byrne. Despite two Andy Chapman header goals in game two, Baltimore would win, and they would go up 2-0 in the best of seven series. After falling behind 3-0 in games, the Wings won games four and five in Wichita. Behind stars, Irvine. Rasmussen. And Borja.
the team would head back to Baltimore. But these exciting wins in Wichita would go for naught. Even the individual brilliance of Eric Rasmussen, who had defenders falling at his feet, wasn't enough. As in Game 6, Baltimore won and advanced to the Major Indoor Soccer League Finals. Chico Barra was the only Wings player who could find the back of the goal in Game 6 in the Wichita loss. For the sixth time, the Wings would get to the semifinals. But with Baltimore scoring 11 goals, the team could go no further. The Wings opened 89-90 with an exciting overtime win against the new Cleveland Crunch. The Wings also added a new goalkeeper. Chris Pete, who had been in the training camp of the Cleveland team, was snatched up by the Wings. And two years later, Chris Pete would find himself voted by his fellow players to the All-Star Games starting team. Andy Chapman brought back memories of days gone by. But 89-90 was the breakthrough season for a new star. UCLA All-America Dale Irvine would score a team-best 48 goals and would establish himself the following season as the best American goal scorer in league history. Wichita Wings swung a blockbuster trade in January of 1990, bringing former arch rival David Byrne in his red shoes to Wichita and into an orange uniform. Byrne would become a spark plug and lead the Wings on a late season drive into the playoffs. Short-handed effort. Byrne. has a flair for the dramatic and gave a sneak preview of what was to come in the following All-Star game with a brilliant assist on a back heel pass in the 89-90 midseason classic. In 90-91, for only the second time in club history, the Wings would retire a uniform number. 
Never again would a player put on a jersey with Kevin Culey's number eight. Culey's distinguished career made him the only player in league history to span three decades with the same team. But the team was struggling on the field, and Roy Turner was asked to return as coach. I think this franchise, while the money's always been obviously one of the main factors, I think the emotion. And right now, the emotion of the community and the team and everybody else is at maybe an all-time low. That emotion was rekindled with three exciting newcomers. Danny Pena. Brad Smith. And Steve Pittman. You know, it must be something about playing an all-star game in Kansas City. In 1983, Kim Runfed was the hero, scoring the overtime game winner. And the second time around, well, Kim was there, but it wasn't Kim's show. It belonged to Chico Borja. With five points, the game-winning goal in overtime, and the game's MVP award. Time and this is what it's all about. God, man, I'm excited. This is beautiful. Put off the field, the team's finances were not beautiful. Speaking for the partners, Bob Barron said the team needed 5,000 season tickets. To classify it as uh, 1,500 tickets in three days as a little bit of a miracle. My common sense tells me there's no chance, but my emotions and my love for the city and this team tells me maybe. One by one, Wings fans came to the office to buy tickets. And the number grew. As of this moment, commitments for 5,035 season tickets have been made. Senior general partner Bob Barron brought good news to Wings fans. And uh, I think the, the idea is that we need that part back in the game. We're thinking about the cheerleaders back. We're thinking about the whole nine yards back again. And. Uh, I agree with it 100%. We're going to put on a show out there. I hope that we will be able to be substantially more consistent than we have in the past. And uh, I think uh, just being in the playoffs is not a worthy goal. The objective is to win the whole thing. General partner Daryl Rolfe brought his friend Hugh Nix with a strong background in local marketing to the team as the new general manager. Did Turner and Nix keep their word about bringing the excitement back? You tell me. The excitement of 91-92 was never more evident than a dramatic early season game against Cleveland. The Wings rallied from a 6-2 deficit and won 7-6 in overtime. Year 13 not only had great soccer, but great entertainment all the way around. Year 13 brought sellout crowds back to the Kansas Coliseum and proved that indeed, Wichita loved its wings.